There has been a lot of interest and buzz around outcomes-based contracting in the last several years. As a health plan, we entered into an agreement with a manufacturer uh, in the non-small cell lung space with an outcomes-based contract. We did it not because we thought there were large dollars at stake, but because we wanted to understand how we could operationalize and execute an outcomes-based contract. And there were several interesting factors that came into play. First was, could we agree on an outcome uh, that was clinically relevant and consistently measured? Second, could we measure it in a reasonable time frame? And third, uh, was there sufficient volume to be able to measure that credibly over time? Uh, so we agreed on an outcome. It was progression-free survival because that was in the, the manufacturer's label. The, uh, the progression-free survival uh, in the clinical studies was fixed, and we agreed that um, for patients who had a progression-free survival that was shorter than that, uh, that the manufacturer would reimburse us. If it was longer than they had already been paid in full, uh, it was a real challenge to implement, uh, and it, it taught us a lot of things. Uh, as opposed to overall survival, where you just have to know whether or not the patient was dead or alive, for progression-free survival, you need to understand uh, why the patient switched therapy, or why they stopped, in fact. And if uh, in our system we have access to a health information exchange, and including radiology records, so we could tell from the record whether or not a patient had progressed. But if we couldn't tell from the, the, the imaging study, then we'd have to go back to the EMR. So we learned a lot in that, in that study, not only about how to structure this um, uh, clinically, but also the, the, the uh, legal and contractual issues associated with that. So I think the important message is that it can be done. It's not easy, but I think in the future, that's going to become kind of the, the uh, requisite for working with the manufacturer. It's clear that as a, as a health plan uh, and payers around the country are trying to move providers towards um, at-risk contracts. And providers likewise are looking for uh, partners who are willing to be accountable. So health plans are trying to make physicians and delivery systems more accountable. And likewise, physicians as well as uh, plans are looking for partners, manufacturers who are willing to be accountable for those outcomes to us. So I think this is the start of, a, a, of an interesting era where manufacturers not only produce drugs, but also take accountability for their outcomes. In many cancers, and certainly non-small cell lung cancer, there are now a plethora of different uh, agents or uh, drug combinations that can be used. In the in the immunotherapy space, we have three therapies uh, on the market, but there will be many more. And the question I think for health plans and for provider groups is, do we have a preferred agent in that space? I think certainly uh, groups that are willing, or manufacturers who are willing to take risk for their outcomes um, uh, will be maybe in a preferred position, especially given the extraordinary cost of some of these therapies, and even more extraordinary cost when they're used in combination.